Greetings, brothers and sisters. As always, we are grateful to the one true living God for his divine wisdom and his perfect and infallible understanding of all things. We thank him for being the true sender and true teacher of holy prophets and holy apostles all of our ministers and to the millions of viewers that are watching. We still have a wonderful hangover from the, our convocation from last week. It was a tremendous blessing to see so many several thousands of souls gathered under one roof, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. We came a long way from 12 to 13 people, didn't we? That's a blessing God knows. Last week alone, just in the convention alone, 143 souls were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, so we are thankful. Um, several backsliders came back. And we are glad about that. Always good to see people come back to God. And if God spare your life to come back to him, don't take it for granted. Nor should we abuse his mercy. I know the Bible said that God's mercy endures forever, but let us remember forever is an indefinite period of time. You know, the Bible said the earth abided forever, but then you have forever and ever, which are two different things. The Bible said the earth abided forever. That means a certain period of time that the world will be here. And then when that time has expired, that forever is over. For it is written that heaven and earth shall pass away. But when you say forever and ever, well, now you're stepping out of time into eternity. So it's a beautiful thing to meet. I met so many new brothers and sisters by the hundreds that I had the chance to meet face to face, but yet they see us every week, if not every day, over the air. They came from Norway, Sweden, different parts of Australia and different parts of Canada. Some was there from the United Arab Emirates. Some was there from Ethiopia, from Kenya, from the Congo, nice. from so many areas of Africa, from the Sudan, uh, other parts of India. I mean, it was just so many that I had the chance to meet. And it was a beautiful looking flower garden. God's creation. How God brings people in of every nation. And that's what God's purpose is. He declared all nations shall flow unto it. Coming to the house of the God of Jacob so they can be taught God's ways. So we can walk in God's path. Out of Zion, it is written, shall go forth the law. But the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Uh, so it's a blessing. Uh, the authorities... Somebody contact the authorities uh, when the black Hebrew Israelites came here at our campus. And I was here early because I had business to attend to and the authorities reached out to me. Captain talked to me and introduced himself and uh, told me that he wouldn't tell me who reached out to him. It could have been neighbors. Could have been folks in church. I asked him, well, who reached out to you? He said, we can't give out that information. He said, but we were reached. He said, we were even told to go on YouTube <laughs> if we want to see the evidence of what happened. He said, Pastor Jennings, we went on YouTube. We saw what happened. Do you want the press charges? <laughs> I said, on what ground? They was on the sidewalk. We don't own the sidewalk. He said, you're right. 
But this is where they made a legal mistake. You were actually having worship. And they violated law by disturbing religious worship. He said if you wasn't in there, he said if you were not in the building and they were just demonstrating, it would be something different. He said, but because you were having religious worship and practicing your religious right, you can actually sue them and you can actually have them prosecuted. So I listened. I'm trying to get brothers out of jail. I am. And when I say I'm trying to get brothers out of jail, I'm talking about every race under the sun. I'm trying to get you out. I'm not trying to put you in. And I'm pretty sure they're watching today. But uh, to the Hebrew Israelites, you supplied the law with evidence by you posting your own video. And the captain reached out to me based upon what you post. We were in service. And I know he's not making it up because he made a reference to whoever the gentleman was walking around the grounds with the camera. He said they really had a foul mouth. They were cussing. He asked me, what did you do to them? I said, I preach what's in the Bible. And so I said, I preach what's in the Bible. He said, well, I'm, I never got involved in, relig- involved in religious discrepancies. I said, I preach that everyone should obey God, and I don't care what color you are. He said, well, several of us here at this precinct, we watch you. So we are very familiar with what you stand for. He said, at the same time, we are very familiar with the Hebrew Israelites also. And I said to him, I said, yes, any organization where everyone are people of color, The law always infiltrate that organization. He got quiet when I said that. That's just a historical fact. Any organization, whether it's Muslim, so-called Christian, so-called Hebrew Israelite, so-called black activist, I don't care what organization it is. But if that organization is people of color, the government always, have always, infiltrated that organization. That's true. And like in the earlier days of the truth of God, they thought we were a black organization. Even though they saw white brothers and Hispanic brothers and Asian, because I am, in their eyes, a black, outspoken, and as they label me, militant minister. The FBI have sent men here. And uh, what initiated it was a caller who called the FBI on me because I preached against racism. And the caller got so upset, he called and called the FBI and the FBI said, oh, we already know about him. We already have some of our men down there already. And some of them got convicted. And I remember this from the preaching of the gospel. Came in my office and confessed to me who they were. Because they went down in water in the name of Jesus Christ. They got convicted. So this is what I mean how no human. When I say no human can beat God, I mean that. No human. What you plan For bad, God will reverse it and make it good for the church. So he asked me over and over, did I want to press charges? And he explained to me what grounds. I asked him a question. 
I say, tell me, sir, based upon the uh, statistics of information that the law has, how many people of color fill the prisons of America? He said, between 87 and 93 yeah. percent. Wow. I said, between 87 and 93 percent. I said, hmm. He said, uh, then he made a sarcastic mark, remark that rubbed me the wrong way. I said, I'm not trying to fill the prisons. I'm trying to diminish the amount of prisoners. Then he said sarcastically and laughed, he said, well, prison is good business. And he laughed when he said it. Now, the Hebrew Israelites and the truth of God, we disagree without a shadow of a doubt. That's right. If this gentleman would not have laughed as if I'm going to be used as a pawn uh -huh. to further the business of the prison system, I am trying to get black, white, brown, yellow, red of every ethnic group not just from the prison, system, prison, prison systems of the world, but to liberate their mind, to change their way of thinking. And for your way of thinking to change, your mind got to change, and for your mind truly change, you need God. To change the way you think. And if God changed the way you think, he had changed the way you feel. So I said to him, I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to press charges. I said, but if any of our members feel threatened, because no one should come to church and feel threatened by anybody on the outside, right. whether here in Philadelphia or any of the temples around the world. Amen. Amen. So to all the first churches of the Lord Jesus Christ around the world, pay attention to what I'm saying. Uh -huh. If any organization, whether it's black, Hebrew, Israelites, or anybody, I don't care who it is, come on the outside of any of the temples, if any of the brothers are able to record them, fine. Send us a recording, date it, log it, make a notation. But if any of the members start to feel threatened, uh -huh. then legal actions will be taking place. <laughs> Me personally, I didn't feel threatened, but the church is not one member, but many. Reason why I didn't feel threatened because I feel I've been threatened so much until I'm used to it. I've been threatened by the FBI. I've been threatened by the government. I've been threatened by uh, so many activists. I've been threatened by all kind of organizations. Me, Jesus said he was acquainted with grief. I'm acquainted with threats. I'm just not phased by it. Uh, so. They got a hold of the uh, video and they said they are studying it, studying the video and they said, well, we will get back to you. I said, fine, you can do that. I said, but at this time, I, I don't want to prosecute them. Right. And uh, this is where we are. Yeah. The word of God is the best prosecutor. So the Bible says you have an advocate with the Father. Now I have a few letters that I want to dive into. We got thousands of letters to catch up on and I don't have time to 
just read them over the air. But letters are coming in in reference. The people are thankful about the convention and letters are coming in of people who saw the incident over the air. Muslims have wrote me. Ex-FOI men have wrote me. Uh, Jews from other synagogues yeah. have wrote in. Uh, and believe it or not, some from the black Hebrew Israelites who were here, they said they were here, I don't know, have wrote in and have staked their case, and it was interesting. And, uh, we're going to read a few of the letters, and this is not a hoax. I get thousands of letters. I remember one man uh, sent a letter and said, I wrote it myself. All these people write me from all the world, from around the world, all of a sudden, I'm so bored, I got to write myself. Uh, also, to my viewers in the state of Oklahoma, you that have reached out to us, I got your letters. Uh, God willing, we will be opening up the temple in uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, or in other areas of Oklahoma. All of you that came to the former yeah. First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ in Oklahoma, I say former because that's not the First Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't you go, if, if, if you went there as a result of the broadcast, and I say I don't have no respect to person, I don't. Pack up and get out of there right away. That's right. So you don't end up being duped and lied to thinking if you go to Puerto Rico, salvation is there. No. That's not the message of God that the Lord going to bomb America in 2026 with a nuclear warhead and wipe out the entire country. Pastor Jenny, you don't know what's going to happen in 2026. I know America ain't going to disappear in 2026. That I do know. The reason why I know it, because the vision that God gave me go past 2026. Go past that. And, uh, and I'm glad to do. Yeah, man, we have plenty more churches to build, business to establish for the church, so them that are unemployed can be employed. And I'm telling you, here, here, here. Here. Here now, 2026 shall be here. You can think I'm arrogant. You can think I'm beside myself. Only one beside me is Williams. <laughs> Amen. Nice. But uh, that prophecy did not come from God. Amen. It was on free will. For you that have drained your bank account and yeah. selling your land and giving a portion of the money to the minister or to that church, get your money back. That's right. It is not first church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if the sign is on the building, demand your money back. Yeah. You see, I don't have no respect to persons. That's right. You try to duke and con people in the name of Jesus Christ or in the name of First Church. Uh -huh. Then I'm going to open up all these cans of whoop scripture. There's a misrepresentation of God and the church. Are you getting what I'm telling? All right, come on, Moretti. Let's get these letters out the way. Damn the man, I have him in another location. And I... Uh, now, leave, leave it there, brother. What you know? Where you going? <laughs> Touch or not? <laughs> Handle or not? Hey, Amen. All right, man, ready? Let's go to work. Let's see what you have now. This letter, this letter comes from Nolan Clark. Greetings. Is Paul boasting in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and at verse 18 that the Spirit? That's what the letter says. All right, that's a very good question. Let's get uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Begin at verse uh, 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we're at the 17th verse. Listen. Without verily, 
givest thanks well. Yeah. But the other is not edified. You know, I believe, I believe it's this the chapter that Paul was out of my speaking in tongue in the order of the Holy Ghost. That's right. And uh, God just gave Paul a gift that many people don't have. Right. And that was speaking in tongue much. Right. All right, listen now. 1 Corinthians 14, we're at verse 18. Yes. I thank my God. I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than you all. I speak in tongue more than you all. Yet in the church. In the church. I had rather speak five words with my understanding. Paul wasn't boasting. He was glorifying God. You know, one scripture, Paul said, you are glorified God in me. In me. That's right. So Paul was glorifying God over the fact how he speak in tongue much. More than you all. More than all of them. Now, that's twofold. Not only did he speak in tongues much in the spirit, but also he speak in diverse tongues naturally. That's right. He spoke various different languages. He can go into a location and uh, speak that language which caused those that was listening to him to give them more attendance. That's right. Uh, but in the spirit, he spoke much and naturally. He also spoke much. But notice what Paul says, and I believe in verse 19. At verse 19. That's what? Yet in the church. In the church. I had rather speak five I'd words. I had rather speak five words. With my understanding. And understand what I'm saying. That by my voice. That by my voice. I might teach others also. In other words, speaking in a language where people cannot understand don't help nobody. That's right. So he come along and say, I'd rather speak five words. With my understanding. In other words, you know, many preachers get up and get up one, two, three, and four, and five hours hollering. Yeah. No one understand nothing by the time they got up and sat down. That's right. So what profit was it? That's right. Fifteen minutes of truth and clarity and understanding had more value right. than one, two, three hours of hollering and grunting like a pig to the slaughter. That's right. Get what I'm telling you now. So the message must be clear. Even though it is written, one must have a divine ability to break down, to interpret, to dissect, to open up, That's it. to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, to be able to understand the letter. And then he got to have the spirit of God to open up and explain the letter. That's right. That there is no contradiction and the folks can understand the intentions of God. That's it. Eh? That's right. All right. Yet in the church, I had rather speak five words yeah. with my understanding. With my understanding. That by my voice, that I might teach my others voice, also. I may do what? I might teach I others also. I may teach others also. Then, is that all of that? Oh, it's a little bit more. All right, come on. Then 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Oh. Hmm. That's it. Speak five words is better. That's right. In other words, a few words with understanding yes. outweigh a bunch of lip that right. don't make sense. That's right. That, that, that's plainly put. That, that's plain. All right, Moretti, next letter. This comes from Alfonso Turner. Pastor, I am sorry about asking you this, but I read out of the King James Version Bible. I told that it was a white man, but I know it is black. I have someone telling me different. I know it don't matter, but I need clarification for myself. I'm sorry to ask something like this. Any help will be helpful. Thank you. Keep doing what you are doing. Give me the book of Galatians, either Jew or Greek. Amen. And uh, God also give me St. John 1 and 1. Mm -hmm. Give me St. John 1 and 1 verse. Amen. Now, I don't know what color King James was. I never <laughs> met him. That's right. I never met King James or Prince James. I don't know. That's His right. color have no relevance. That's right. For years, for years, for years, people have said that a bunch of Europeans got together and wrote the Bible. That's right. And there are other groups that says, no, all the blacks wrote the Bible. <laughs> Again, you get into the black and white argument. Right. Yeah. This is what should be your interest. The Bible says this. All scripture is given by inspiration Glory of God. God. I want you to hear this now. Amen. Give chapter and verse for this. Amen. Listen, come on now. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Follow me. And we're at verse 16. What is it? All scripture. All. Notice the scriptures are not called white scriptures. No. It's not called black scriptures. No. It's just called scriptures. Scripture. Jesus said, search the scriptures. That's right. Jesus said the error because they didn't know the scripture. That's it. The Bible said whatsoever things are written a full time are written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures get color out of it. That's yeah. right. Get me? That's it. When you get caught up in color, 
then uh, the devil blind you, just like the Europeans. That's right. For years, the Europeans threw color over the Bible and made the whole Bible white and right. use it as a tool to suppress people of color all through history. That's right. That's what they did. That's why they used images. White Jesus, white Moses, white Mary, white Martha. That's right. That's it. When they come up with the Trinitarian doctrine, they got God white, and they make God look like an old man. That's it. Long gray hair, long gray beard. And then they make the Son of God white, a little pudgy, SpongeBob looking need baby with blonde little curly hair and blue eyes. Right. And then they make the dove white, which is supposed to be the Holy Ghost. That's right. They got all the angels, all the hosts of heaven white. So what happened years later? Men of color retaliated by making all heaven black. That's right. All heaven. I want the world to get out of the black, white, and yellow, and brown, and just get into God. That's it. Wonderful. That's right. Glory to God. All scripture. You hear the Bible talking. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Don't you 16. know Jesus sent his apostles to out everywhere. Everywhere. That's right. Hey, hallelujah. Glory to God. The apostles went everywhere. Everywhere. He said, preach the gospel to everyone. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Do you hear this? In Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Baptizing them in Go the teach name all of the all Father. Nations. He, went, he said, preach the gospel to every creature. That's right. To every creature. Right. Black man is a creature. That's right. So the white man is a creature. That's right. The brown man is a creature. Go ye into the, yeah, all the world. Listen at this now. St. Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. Go ye into all the world. That's what God's, that's what we're doing. That's right. That's Hallelujah. I don't just sit around America. No, no. Oh, no. God is pulling people from all around the world. That's right. And it's, it's a beautiful sight too, brother. Oh, yes. Go ye into all the world. Into all the world. And preach and the gospel. And preach the gospel to every creature. Hallelujah. There's a yellow man a creature. There's right. a the black gospel. man a creature. There's a white man a creature. If you're orange, are you a creature? Yes. That's right. The Bible said preach it to who? Every creature. I got everybody. So I don't know what color King James was. Never met him. Don't know. History say he's white. History say he's black. I don't care what color he was. All right. I know that all scriptures are uh, given, given by, by the inspiration, inspiration of, God. of God. And if I get the scriptures right, the Bible said I'll profit by it. For doctrine. I have my doctrine right if I stick with scripture. For reproof. And then I'll be able to correct it right if I stick with scripture. For correction. What else? For instruction For in instruction righteousness. For instruction in righteousness. That the man that of the God, man may, of be God may be complete. Thoroughly furnished. Well supplied. Unto all good works. If you stick with scripture, you will have a good word. Knowing this first. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of the scripture. No prophecy of the scripture is, is of given. any private interpretation. Do you hear that? Second that means no one took matters in their own hands and just started writing. No black, no brown, no yellow, nobody. For the prophecy came not I in old I remember years time. ago, uh, <clears throat> there was a uh, book that I saw that says black people in the Bible. Hmm. Every race is in the Bible. <laughs> That's right. But the re it is sad. The reason why many of these books was written was because the European made it their business to erase Anything, every ethnic group out of the Bible and then made the whole Bible them. Them. And I come along and let you know that the Bible is divinely inspired yeah. and it's all about God for the correction of man. Knowing this first. Knowing this first. That no prophecy of no the prophecy. scripture. No prophecy. No None prophecy. of the prophets. Moved by their own accord. That's right. Listen at this. That knowing this first. I want you to know it first. That no prophecy, no of, the prophecy of the scripture is of any, is private, of any interpretation. private interpretation. For the prophecy came the prophecy not. prophecy came not. In old time by how? the will of man. Wait a minute. It didn't come how? By the will of man. It didn't come from Cambridge. That's right. Right. They didn't come from Webster. That's right. Or Harvard or That's Oxford. Right. That's right. Uh, none of the apostles was Harvard men. <laughs> That's right. None of the prophets were Yale men. That's right. These men had a degree that you couldn't get on earth. Glory to God. That's right. And they were divinely inspired. That's right. They were holy men. Holy men. The Bible said holy men of, of God's God space. Space.
speak. As they were moved. As they was what? As they were moved. What moved them? By the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. The black man wasn't moved by a black spirit. No. The white man wasn't moved by a white spirit. That's right. The holy men. Holy Notice men. how God bring it. But holy men of God that's, speak. That, that's what interests God. And that's, that's what interests me. That's right. Holy men of God speak as they was moved. By the Holy Ghost. Glory to God by the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. All right. Next letter. All right. Next letter. It says, good afternoon, Pastor Jennings. Good afternoon. Oh, yeah. It's afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Brother Judah. All right, Judah. I am a Hebrew Israelite. All right. I was there Sunday with the rest of my brethren hmm. when we visited your campus. Sir, I must say that looking back at the video, and listening to one of our brothers record, I felt ashamed and I felt embarrassed. That's interesting. He focused more on the size of your church than the matter at hand, which made me feel as though we were more jealous of what you have accomplished than what we came for. He took too much time talking about the size of your church and then the statement was made that you must have been a drug dealer which was insulting. This put me in an odd position for when I got home, my wife co commented and said, I quote, it made us look like a group of jealous black men. Pastor Jennings, sir, I personally would like to apologize. Yeah. Wonderful. Would like to apologize for participating in that gathering on Sunday. I hope one day that I can visit your church personally. You're more than welcome. Until then, I do hope you accept my apology. Shalom. Yes, I accept your apology. By all means, I do. You know, one scripture says, there is some good in thee. Indeed. Amen. That's right. All right, next letter. Next letter. It says, good afternoon, Pastor Gino Jennings. I hope this letter find you doing well and in the best of health. I'm a little tired, but I'm coming along. <laughs> my, <All> right. name, <laughs> my name is Brother Raheem Muhammad, formerly a member of the Nation of Islam. I was in the FOI, you know, the Fruit of Islam. I saw the escapade that took place at your church by the Hebrew Israelites. Sir, are you aware that many of the Hebrew Israelites are ex-Nation of Islam followers? Yes, I am aware of such. I was applauded that these black men would stand on the outside of a black pastor's church, hollering, screaming like a gang of thugs. In my years of being in the FOI, we have never sworn any religious place because we had grievances or disagreed with what religious belief. I was hoping you would not come out as they wanted you to. So I waited. I tuned into your live webcast of your conference, and I must say, the Saturday night sermon, you handled it well. Thank God for that. You kept your composure. And as you always say, you called a spade a spade. I have three questions to the black Hebrew Israelites. All right. What are they? First, have you ever encircled an all-white Christian church? Oh, very interesting question. Number two. And this question is, uh, from Mr. Muhammad is directed to the Hebrew Israelites. He ain't directing to me. Right, that's right. Did you ever encircle an all-white Christian all church? All-white Christian church. That's a very good question. Yes. Number two. All right. You know the difference of belief between you and the Muslims. So why have you never surrounded a mosque? Very good question. Number three. Why haven't you surrounded a mosque? All right. Number three, seeing that many of our black young men are being shot down by white police officers, why have you never surrounded a police station? <laughs> Very good question. When I look at the Hebrew Israelites' track record, they always attack black churches and then say they love black people. Stay strong, Pastor Jennings. We have a lot of respect for you. I just wanted to drop you a few lines. As-salamu alaykum. As-salamu alaykum. Very good letter. And those were very, very, very interesting questions. 
As uh, you know, we're living in a sad time now. But there's many letters like this, many of different organizations that are appalled because the truth of God is extremely internationally popular and known. We're known for our strictness, known for our discipline, and known for our Bible stand. We're not out there arguing. And they're not the first ones that came outside years ago on Frankfurt Avenue. There was a preacher. He's dead now with his church. Uh, my children was little then. Bishop Tooks. And uh, he passed away. And... If you're going to come on outside someone's church, at least know who the preacher, you know, what he looked like. I think at the time, my oldest daughter, I think it was Brittany Sierra, and my oldest son, he was the baby, Ernie. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, so when I drove up on Letterly Street, they was all already out there and uh, giving out, you know, flat flyers and whatnot. This Pastor Jennings, he's a liar. He done preached about 40-something lies, and they had all this stuff written out. So when I drove up, I let my window down. Uh, Dottie said, what you doing? I said, they don't even know what I look like. She said, what you going to do? I said, watch this. I said, sir, excuse me, what's going on? Yeah. He ran to my car. He said, you go to that church? I said, yes, sir. <laughs> he said, you go to Geno Jennings Church? I said, I go to the church here. He said, he's a liar and a false prophet. I said, he is? He said, I tell you, you should come out of this place. The fella gave me a long list of scribble scrapple. You got to leave this church and follow Bishop E.W. Tooks. He is the only one right in the world. I said, in the world? He said, in the world. He said, take this. I said, who, what is this? He said, these are all the lies Gino Jennings preached. I asked him, I said, have you ever met Gino Jennings? He said, no. I said, so if he come outside now, you won't know what he looked like? He said, no, but I know he's of the devil. I said, I will remember that, sir. <laughs> I rolled my window up and parked while my wife was trying to keep her composure <laughs> from laughing <laughs> because they had no clue it was me whom they was talking to. And even when a false church came up, right. we would not go outside and belittle ourselves right. Right. and act like a fool. Wonderful. If someone wrote me, another Hebrew Israelite wrote me, I didn't get a chance to bring the letter down, and said, I'm curious, how did the discussion come about between you and the nation of Islam? Well, on Frankfurt Avenue, our old headquarters temple, uh -huh. Smallwood Muhammad, Najee Muhammad, and Daoud came to service one day. I didn't know who they were. But I can tell by their mannerisms they were Muslims. Uh -huh. And Williams, we was up teaching, and Williams was going to that Bible, and I was explaining, and it fascinated them. So before I end it, Smallwood raised his hand up. May I ask you a question, sir? He said, first and foremost, I never saw this thing that y'all do in my life in no church. He said, the chemistry between you and Brother Williams is just is interesting. And uh, he said, but if you, if you don't mind, sir, respectfully, I have a question. He asked the question. Williams went to, I called for the scripture. Williams went to it, got it, broke it down. He said, Okay, you know, because Small would always lick in his lips. That's good. He asked another question. When he asked the question, Williams already had the scripture. I went into it, broke that down. He asked, if I'm not mistaken, about two or three questions and sat down. And after service, all three men came up, introduced themselves, and we met. Never, at no time, and they came to the church about three or four or five times asking questions. Never at no time were they disrespectful or disruptive. Smallwood started writing me letters, laying me out. He said, you're a false prophet. He said, you're a liar. 
He said, what you're preaching is a lie. And the subject was that God create himself from triple darkness. And I teach that God didn't create himself from triple darkness. God always was and God have always been. So after he would write me, he would come to visit the church. And I see him in the congregation. I said, Smallwood, I got your letter. You called me a false prophet. And he would laugh. And then after service, he would come up, shake my hand, and embrace. I said, what you doing hugging a false prophet? <laughs> but he was always, I mean, respectful. Even if you look at the debate today on Frankfurt Avenue, the whole debate was respectful. Yes, it was. When me and Rodney Muhammad one of Farrakhan direct ministers who was over at that time, if I'm not mistaken, he was the minister of the East Coast region. Where he and I, before he and I debated, we went out to dinner. A lot of folks don't know what went on behind the scenes. There was a Muslim restaurant called the Garden of Bilal. Oh boy, they had some good food too. Hallelujah. And the food was fresh. The FOI, a few of them, and some of our brothers, along with me and the FOI, uh, Brother Muhammad, we went and met at the Garden of Bilal. Nice. The Fruit of Islam and my brothers, they sat at the table and they was conversing, you know, as if they knew each other all their lives. And me and Rodney Muhammad, we sat at the table discussing the logistics yeah. of the debate. And, uh, and of course, I wasn't going to leave without eating some dinner. But, he, and we even took pictures together. Nice. The whole discussion was respectful. That's right. The whole meeting was respectful. Beautiful. And then when, we, when it came time for us to debate, <laughs> he threw out his sharp into windows at me when it was his time for the platform. Yeah. He said there's I forgot how he worded it, but I remember the one phrase he said, yeah, there's nothing but a nuisance on my post. <laughs> and the whole place erupted. And, and, and it took me, I laughed, because I was saying to myself, keep the fire. <laughs> I had no idea he wasn't going to say it and then go. But they were always respectful. And uh, me and the brothers, we were coming back either from Boston or either Seattle, Washington. Uh -huh. And who do we see for the first time since that discussion? Brother Daoud. He saw us before we saw him. Uh -huh. Daoud was the one that kept saying that God is a black man. I asked him, was God begotten? I said, I know you know Catholic because there ain't no mother up in heaven. And that's what he do. He was the one standing looking up. But uh, we embraced and just talked a little, and he was saying, you know, it's good to see y'all. But it was respectful. So if the Hebrew Israelites would have came respectfully, then I would sincerely took on the consideration to have the discussion. But let me make an example. If Brother Kevin going to come to my house, spray paint it, bust all the windows, Give me the finger. Why in the world would he ask me to come? Can I come to your house to have dinner? No, you ain't coming to my house to have dinner. Because your very approach was wrong. That's right. You know, the Bible said let all things be done decently. And in order. And in order. All right, next letter. Next letter says, good evening, Mr. Wait, wait, Gino. Before you read that letter, let's go back to the one that Mr. Muhammad sent. And just read those questions again. First question. Because I just want the questions because they're not directed to me. Right. Listen. First question. Have you ever encircled an all-white Christian church? Because they call white brothers Edomites. And they say they are the enemy. They say they are of the devil. Right. And uh, they have no chance to enter to the kingdom of God. Listen. Next question. Next question. You know the differences of belief between you and the Muslims. So why have you never surrounded a mouse? Good question. Yeah. All right. And the last one. Seeing that many of our black young men are being shot down by white police officers, why have you never surrounded a police station? Mm. Very good. good question. Very good question. 
So uh, you can answer them on your webcast. You're playing Pastor Jennings, and I'm glad you are, <laughs> and they are, uh, which I don't mind really because I'm used to such. Yeah. But uh, act, ask, answer these legitimate questions. And if you haven't surround police stations or as you call Edomite churches and or mosques, it's about time that you do so to boost up your track record. Because yeah. I don't have the time to waste to surround nobody church That's physically, right. but God knows I surround the world with gospel. That's right. I surround you with Bible. Oh, yes. That's our interest. That's what our interest is. All right, next letter. All right, last letter. It says, good evening, Mr. Gino Jennings. Well, it's not evening here, so I guess you wrote again in the evening time. All right. I hope this letter finds you and yours in the best health. Yes, mine just, and yours is coming along pretty well. Just to let you know, I am a Hebrew, a black Hebrew. All right. It's not important the synagogue that I attend, but what is important, but it, what is important, believe it or not, I first heard of you from my rabbi. My rabbi thinks very highly of you, and he often speaks of you in our synagogue services. You are highly respected among the Jewish community. So this brings me to my next statement. I never thought I would see the day that I would be embarrassed to say I am a Jewish or Hebrew or any of those things. After seeing on YouTube those fellas who you call the Purple Gang, <laughs> I heard of this Hebrew Israelite organization. But this is the first time I've actually seen them. I was applauded. Many of us in the Hebrew or Jewish community take great offense that they would even call themselves Israelites. We believe that Jehovah is the God of us all. In our place of worship, we have blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians, and other ethnic groups. Right. Sir, we pray that God keep you and protect you because it is obvious to us that the Lord has given you a mission and we firmly believe you will accomplish that mission. Yeah. Thank you, kindly. Yeah. That all? No, nah, some more. All right. Because we disagree on certain biblical issues, you will never get us to surround your place of worship threatening, screaming, and hollering just so you can come outside and act like us. This is one of the most embarrassing moments that I've ever witnessed from any community that called themselves Jews, Hebrews, or Israelites. Sir, we are praying for you, and I hope these Jews find their real place with God. Shalom, and hope to meet you in person. Thank God for that. All right. Very good letter. Very good letter. Now, let us go back and rehearse the matter. I want Daniel and Revelation, mm -hmm. the appearance. Of God. First, we're in Daniel chapter 10. Let us itemize what these things represent because many have taken it literal. That's right. You know, the Bible talks in hieroglyphic form. Yeah. That's right. And many take it literal. Right. I want everybody to hear me and get this. In Daniel chapter 10, and we'll start at verse 4. The Bible, I want all nations to get what I'm telling you. Amen. The Bible was not designed to exalt, to elevate no color above another. No. The scriptures was never designed for one ethnic group to compete. No against another ethnic group. That's right. The scriptures was not designed to hate an ethnic group based upon skin color alone. That's right. Never. Never. Yeah, hear the old troublemaker now. That's right. At no time until man got his hands on the scripture. That's right. When man got his hands on the scripture, then man integrated his personal feelings, his personal views to try to use the scripture to his advantage. One famous scripture that the slave master used was servants obey your master. And they took that scripture and held it over people of color 
and made people of color believe that it was the will of God for them to be beaten at will, raped at will, your grandmother, your mother, your daughter to be physically abused and penetrated by the slave master, slave master son, slave master grandfather, slave master brother, and hand your mama, your daughters down from man to man. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 22. You see, they handled the word of God deceitfully. deceitfully. That's right. Listen at Paul. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 22. Get me. Servants. Servants. Obey in all things. Obey in all things. Your masters according to the flesh. And this is what they use. That's right. That's right. They justify rape. They justify hanging. They justify torture. They justify being burnt That's while right. a rope is hung around your neck. This is what bigots use. That's right. That's true. And because people of color, many of them was illiterate. Yeah. But yet wanted to be religious. That's right. Their ignorance empowered the slave master. That's right. So he would read scriptures to those that could not read at all. That's right. And handle the, the word infallible God. word of God deceitfully. deceitfully. That's exactly what religions are doing right now. That's right. These pulpit tricksters use Bible quotations to get rich. That's right. They use Bible quotations to bamboozle. Yes. They use, they, I was telling you the other day of some couple who couldn't say, say they was having physical complications. They marriage. So the preacher made them come into church so they can lay on the so-called offering table and have sex oh Lord. while the congregation look on and the preacher took oil and anointed them, mm. robbing them, mm. and used scripture. Amen. Ignorance is the worst form of prison. That's right. True freedom is not when you parole out of prison. No. True freedom is when you are paroled out of the ignorance and the stupidity of your carnal mind. That's right. Someone said, I know who I am. Let me tell you something. Nobody knows who they are until you learn who God is and then God will bring you into the knowledge of your total and complete self. That's yes. right. You don't know God, you don't know yourself. That's right. Because nobody knows you better than your creator. Yeah. And who can teach you about you better than God? That's right. So the book of scriptures is a mirror yeah. that goes past your exterior. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the true identity is not your exterior, it's what's on the inside. That's right. And the Bible talks about the intents. Of the heart. Of God, know your thoughts. That's right. Know your uprising. Know your downsetting. And this is why you work to pull off the old Adamic nature, meaning your characteristics of the past that's corrupt and thoroughly flawed. That's right. Are you getting, hallelujah, glory to God. Amen. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Listen. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh. All right, we're done with that. Let's go on to the book of Daniel. Back in Daniel chapter 10 and at verse 4. Let's get the description mm -hmm. of the most high God. Amen. Listen. Daniel, Daniel chapter 10 and verse 4. Follow me. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month. Yes. As I was by the side of the great river which is here to kill. I was by the side of the great river here to kill. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked. And behold, a certain man clothed in linen. A certain man. This was his shape. That's right. This was his form. Right. This was his fashion. A certain man. A certain man clothed, clothed in, linen, in linen. Whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphaz. And then what? His body 
also was like the burial. And, and his face. His face. As the appearance of lightning. You know that wasn't no natural man? <laughs> no way. <laughs> no way. It ain't a natural man on earth. <laughs> Amen. Face is like lightning. That's lightning right. is blinding. Amen. Lightning outshines the sun. That's right. Someone said, well, the Bible said it was a man. Yes. Yeah. His shape, his form, his fashion, his figure, his image. His body also was like the burrow. His body was like the burrow. And his face, and his the face of lightning. had the appearance of lightning. And his eyes as lamps of fire. You know they ain't no human being. No way. No way. They ain't no human being. No. But he had the shape, the form, the fashion. You better if I'm correct, the book of Hosea quickly Hosea. that come to mind how God used similar two. Right. Plural. See, God didn't use one shape, my viewer, right. Right. when he manifests himself many times to the many prophets times. or to people. That's right. God used shapes, mm -hmm. plural. Forms, That's right. plural. Fashions, plural. That's similar right. twos. Plural. Hosea chapter 12 let and me get verse you, 10. Let me give you a Bible for this now. Hosea chapter 12 and we're at verse 10. All right, John. I have also spoken by the prophet. God talking. Amen. I have also spoken by the prophets. And I have multiplied visions. I let them see a whole lot of things. And use similitudes. Spell it. S-I-M-I-L-I-T-U-D-E-S. -I -I -E similitudes. What you mean, Lord? I came... Looking like different things. That's right. Hallelujah. Similar to, I came looking similar. I, that's right. That's right. To other things. That's Go right. That's right. Go ahead, bro. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Follow me in the Bible. Well, Hosea, listen, Hosea, that's the language of book. Hosea chapter 12 and at verse 10. Yes. I have also spoken by the prophets. I spoke to the prophets. And I have multiplied visions. I multiplied visions. I, I let them see a whole lot of things. And use similitudes. I use similitudes. By the ministry of the prophets. While these men preach, I appeared and came to them looking similar to other things. That's right. Hallelujah. By day, Hallelujah. I was in the cloud with Israel. That's right. By night, night, I come as a pillow of fire. That's right. That's right. When the famine in the days of Ahab was about to come to an end, Hallelujah. they said I saw a cloud in the form of a hand. That's right. Coming up out of the water. That's right. In the days of Daniel, I came as the similitude to a man's hand. That's right. Writing right. on the wall, yeah. many, many to kill. You false sense. That's similitudes. Right. Similitudes. The prophet called me tree of life. That's right. The prophet called me lily hmm. of the valley. That's the right. The prophet called me rose. Hallelujah. Oh, share it. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? I have also spoken about Similar by the to different shapes, different forms, right. different fashions. And I have multiplied vision. Yeah, I even took on the title of different earthly things. I'm called Living Water. Living Water. Similar to. That's right. Different shapes, mm -hmm. different forms, that's similar to what he created. That's right. Are you getting? Are I have you also getting spoken by the prophets. I have spoken by the prophets. And I have multiplied visions. Hallelujah. I gave multiple visions. And you similitudes. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. I use similitudes, plural, by the ministry of the prophets. By the preaching of the prophets. Now go back to Daniel. Back in Daniel chapter 10 and we're at verse 6. Uh -huh. His body also was like the burrow. His body. His body was like the burrow. I never said there was no color in heaven. No. I just said God ain't black. That's right. There's a whole lot of color in heaven. A whole lot heaven. of colors. That's right. The Bible said there's a rainbow right about the throne in sight like into an emerald. That's right. The Bible said I saw a throne and one set on the throne was lacking of a sapphire stone That's under right. his feet. That's right. There's all type of colors in heaven. That's right. The elders around the throne all arrayed in white robe white and they had on their head crowns of gold. Of gold. That's right. That's right. Gentleman wrote me and said,
Please explain. I saw your interview. What was that fellow that always say? Uh, amazing. I mean, Jesse Pierce. Jesse Pierce. Pete Peterson. I always say amazing. He said, I saw your interview, and he asked you, was Jesus black? And you made it plain that Jesus was born in a region of color. Yes, his skin was not, he was not a European. He was a black man. Where he come from, I don't know whether he was light skin, brown skin, but he came where people was of color. That's right. He said, but then you said, God is not black. That's right. That's right. Let me make an example. Right. I'm a black man. But the God that's in me is not black. That's right. He's just in my black body. That's it. That's right. You see, God, give me John Ch uh, chapter 4 and verse John 24. 4, 24. And give me uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse 3. And Romans first, give me Luke chapter 1 and begin at verse 30. Amen. Luke chapter 1 and we're starting at verse 30. Listen at this. Luke chapter 1 and verse 30. All right. And the angel said unto her, Fear not. The Mary, angel said to her, Fear not. For thou hast found favor you with found God. You found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive thou in thy womb. Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. Bring forth a what? A son. That's a body. That's a flesh and blood body. Body. That's right. And that flesh and blood body had color. You, uh, you better go back up above that. Back let, in, let's, let's see what came, what, what overshadowed her. Back in uh, St. Luke chapter 1, we're at, down at verse 35. Listen at this. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost. What? The Holy Ghost. That don't have no color. N no, it doesn't. No. No, it doesn't. No. The Spirit of God shall come upon thee. Shall come upon you. And the power of the highest. That don't have no color. That's right. No. The power, the movement, the unction of the Holy One shall overshadow thee. That's going to overshadow you. Therefore also, Therefore also, the holy thing, the holy thing, which shall be born of which thee, which shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. That got color. That's it. What overshadowed? Don't have no color. No color. What you come out your womb, that have color. That's right. Nice. God was in a vessel that had color. Second Corinthians. Amen. To wit. To wit that God. Let's get chapter and verse. Second Corinthians chapter 5. I want everybody to follow me and hear me. Amen. So I don't have no problem with Jesus being black. Fine, big deal. That don't mean nothing to me. His life outweighs his color. Right. That's right. Or that God, if I don't follow what he teach, me and my black britches is going to hell. <laughs> That's right. Huh? That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Second Corinthians. Then we go back to Daniel. Amen. Get me. Second Corinthians chapter 5, we'll write it verse 19. Yes. To wit. To what? That God. What? That God. What God? The God of Israel, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Moses. Amen. The God that made the worlds and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, to what if not a temple made with hands, as if he needed anything, that's he is right. exalted above the heavens. That's right. That God, that's perfect. That God, that's infallible. Go that God is not begotten. That God had no beginning. That God had no ending. That God always was, always have been. That God. Hallelujah. That God. That God was in Christ. What? That God was in Christ. You see, what he was in had color. What he was in was flesh. What he was in was flesh and blood. That's right. That's right. That God was in Christ. Spirit is of no nationality. God is a spirit. The spirit of God is before. Yes. All nationality. That's right. That's the Spirit of God is before all ethnic groups. That's why I declare, there ain't no way that say God is black. No. God is spirit. That's right. Huh? God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And when the Bible says, can anything clean come out of Nazareth, you just look at the geography of Nazareth. Yeah. Of those folks around Nazareth are people of color. That's right. That's not Europe. That's, That's not right. European at all. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of when Judea. When Jesus was born of Bethlehem of Judea. In the days of Herod the king. In the days of Herod the king. Behold, there came wise men from the there east. There came Jerusalem, wise men from the east. Saying, where is he that is where born is he king? That is born king. King of the Jews. King of the Jews. For we have seen his star We've in seen the his east. star. In the east. In the east. And so I come to worship that, him. That doesn't bother me. Yes, I can say of a truth that Jesus was born in a region of color. Then come back and say God is not black. Saint uh, Romans chapter 1 Do and verse 3. you see what three. I'm telling you? That's right. This is what I mean by harmonizing the Bible. That's right. Listen at this. Romans chapter 1 and we're at verse 3. That's what? Concerning his son. Concerning his son, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our, Lord, our Lord. Which was made. Which was made of the seed of David according to what? According to the flesh. His flesh had color. <laughs> That's it. His flesh had color. According to the flesh. According to the flesh. All right. And declared to be the son of God. 
with power. And that same Jesus come back and said, flesh profit of nothing. That's right. He, yeah. Flesh don't mean nothing. Go back to Daniel. Back, go right. back to Daniel. Then I got to uh, roll over to uh, Revelation. Back in Daniel chapter 10, we're at verse 6. Listen, yes. world, hear, 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 hear this, viewers. Yes. Daniel, I want you to get this. Amen. I want to knock all this prejudice That's and right. racism out of you. That's right. Take your black pictures off the wall that you think is Jesus and take your white ones off too. Get on your knees, repent of your sins, and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. That's it. Let the Lord fill your black, white, brown, yellow soul with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because if you think when the Lord comes, you're going to meet him in peace because you're black, brown, or yellow, or white. Or white. Oh, you're going to be shocked of a lifetime. That's right. You don't have no black worms. No. You don't have no white worms. No, no. Hey Amen. When you, a man died, I don't care if he's so white, he looked like the Pillsbury Dough Man. <clears throat> Until if you touch him, he sound like him. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Black man die, I don't care if you pose him in a casket. Amen. Put a black glove on his hand and make a fist. <laughs> Put on that dead with power. Do whatever you like. Do whatever you like. Your skin color, yeah, man, will not play a role. No. In your eternal life with no. God. That's right. I want all you people to get this who follow preachers only because they look like you. That's right. And that's one of the flaws in this hypocritical religion called Christianity. Yeah. White folk will follow a white preacher because he's white. And that's black right. folk will follow a black preacher because he's black. Amen. You've got to follow a preacher because he's of God. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And then you tie in with the Bible. Amen. Pastor Paul said, follow me as, as I follow Christ. He ain't said, follow me because I'm going to come out the tribe of Benjamin. No. Follow me because I'm a Jew. No. Follow me because I'm white. No. No, no. That's right. The Bible said, break up your folly ground. That's right. Break it up. Break it up. That's right. There's only one power that we all should submit to. That's it. Who will take God, and that's the power of God himself. That's right. All right, son. Daniel chapter 10, and we're still at verse 6. Follow me. His body also his was body like the burrow. It's like the burrow. And his face. And his face. As the appearance of lightning. It's like lightning? Man, there ain't no human being. No way. Oh, no. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Listen. And his eyes as lamps his of fire. His eyes as lamps of fire. Higher. And his arms and his feet. And his arms and feet. Like in color to polish brass. Like the color of polish brass. Polished now let brass. us understand, there's different color tones of brass. Yes. That's right. Sure. Brass is not one color tone. Oh, there's right. different color tones of brass. That's right. We're going to break down all this and show you what it all represented. Amen. Finish up Daniel, then we go to Revelation. We are going to Revelation. We are going to Revelation. His body also was like the burrow. All right. Still in Daniel chapter 10 and verse 6. Yes. His body also was like the burrow. And? And his face as the appearance of lightning. Yes. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Yes. And his arms and his feet like in color to polish bread. You see all these different colors? Amen. You see all these different colors they're talking about? That's yeah. right. Listen. And the voice of his words. It's the voice of his words. Like the voice of a multitude. Speaking with authority. And I, Daniel. Here, 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 get your attention. That's right. I, Daniel. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the they vision. They didn't see it. But a great quaking fell upon a them. A great quake fell on them. So that they fled to hide themselves. They got away from there. That's right. All right, now let's get the book of Revelation now, chapter 1. I want all of my viewers to get this Amen. because I'm pretty sure that there will be many that will play target practice with this, but I really don't care. <laughs> We're going to come back to the Bible because many of you are taking these things literal. Remember the scripture in Hosea that he used similar tools, different shapes, different forms, different figures, different fashions by the ministry of the prophets right. to get his will over. Right. I believe it was Isaiah that said, I, uh, Isaiah, the son of Amos, during the time that King Uzziah died, right. he declared, I saw the Lord. That's right. Yeah. And this train filled, filled the temple. The temple. Yes. Now, if you take that literally and think train only have one meaning, you would think he was riding on a choo-choo. That's right. That's right. That's right. Or you'll just, or you'll forget that train also is the 
uh, uh, like a gown, you know, the, the back part. We know when a woman come down right. from marriage and she got the back part of her dress, it's, it's called a train. That's right. When it says his train filled the temple, it's talking about his garment. Yeah. That's it. It was so much of his garment, it filled the temple. Yeah. That's right. Because the Bible says he's higher than heaven, deeper than hell, broader than the sea, and longer than the earth. And God said, if I cut you off and shut you up, who can stop me? That's the right. prophet Solomon said he'd ride upon the wings of the wind. Yeah. Right. Now think of it. The prophet said, well, he saw him, he saw him, and he ride among the wings of the wind, but God is too big for the wind. That's right. That's right. The Bible said the clouds are the dust, dust of his feet. The dust, dust, dust of his feet, yet God's feet is not dirty. That's right. No. Oh, no. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Speaking in symbolic terms. Similitudes. Listen at this. Now in the book of Revelation chapter 1. Follow me. And we're at verse 12. All right. Or we'll start at verse 11. All right. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. I am Alpha. Yes. And Omega. Oh, yes. The first. First. And the last. He's the first. And the last. He's going to end everything. That's right. That's right. Besides him. And there's nothing in between either. Oh, no. no. Glory to God. <laughs> He's the beginning and the end. That's right. First and the last. First and the last. Which is and was and is, hallelujah, to come. I'm the almighty. That's right. Uh -huh. And what thou seest right in a book. He's talking to Brother John. Amen. Brother of James, sons of Zebedee. That's right. What you see, I want you to write it down in the book. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. And send it to the seven churches. Send it to the seven congregations that's throughout Asia. Unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos. Yes. And unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia. Follow me. And unto Laodicea. When it said Philadelphia, you ain't talking about here. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> mm -mm. Notice it said the seven churches of Asia. Which are We're Asia. not in Asia. No. All right, I guess we want to straighten that out. <laughs> Amen. Come on, son. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. Listen. Amen. I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being and turned, being turned, I saw seven I golden saw candlesticks. I saw seven golden candlesticks. Now, seven golden candlesticks, okay. not just candlesticks. Golden. But it was symbolic. That's right. Yes. Seven golden candlesticks, the candlesticks, if you would listen. Mm -hmm represent the seven churches of Asia that's right. that the Lord told John to write to. That's right. That's right. The seven golden candlesticks. Now, golden mean precious. precious. Let you know the church is precious. That's right. A candlestick is needed where there's darkness. That's right. Do we take God? Amen. Eh? Amen. Now, a candlestick is no good until you light it. Light it. The flame of the candlestick is the power of the candlestick that guides you, blessed be the name of God, through darkness. That's right. What is God telling us? Even though the church is precious and valuable, the light of God has to be in there. That's the right. The wisdom of God has to be in there. The knowledge of God has to be in there. That, that so light can shine in the darkness and we can be delivered from ignorance, from blindness, and from stupidity. That's right. See, a lot of you folk go to church, yeah. but it ain't, it's a candlestick, but there ain't no light there. That's right. And your preacher don't have the power to light it. No. In other words, the light of the candlestick is the Holy Ghost. That's right. That which a mighty burning fire. That's right. And when the fire of the Holy Ghost is in the church, it is the power of God, the wisdom of God, the moving of God. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? And I turned to see the voice that spake you with know, me. You know, you put fire behind anybody, they're going to run. Oh, yeah. Right. When the wisdom of God get in behind you, you are run out of darkness. That's right. That's right. You are run out of ignorance. Amen. Come on, son. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. This is what me. it is, viewers. We want to take it apart. Amen. And break it down and show you what the hieroglyphics are. That's right. Uh -huh. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. I saw seven golden candles. And in the midst of the seven candles. In the midst of the seven candles. One light. One light. Unto the Son of Man. Because the Son of Man died on the cross. That's right. Stayed yeah. around a little bit longer after his resurrection. Work, worked and walked among the apostles. That's right. And then at the appointed time ascended above all heavens. Mm -hmm. and Clothed with a garment down to the foot. And what? And gird about the paps with a golden girdle. Yes. His head. His head. And his hairs. His head and hairs. Were white. Were white. Like wool. 
like wool, as white as snow. So the color of his hair and the color of his head was compared to the color of wool, or rather to the color of wool and the color of snow. And snow. Wool is one texture. Right. Snow is another texture. That's right. And remember, Daniel said his face. And his face. Was what? As the appearance of lightning. His face is like lightning. That's right. Now, when John saw the Lord, his head and his hairs was white. Like wool. And many took it literal. Right. That's right. I want to show you what wool represents. That's right. Eh? Amen. Amen. Isaiah. What wool represents. That's right. You know, the Bible says in the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah. And we'll start at verse 3. Come on, William. He is despised and rejected. You better begin at verse 1 well, if you don't mind. I, I don't mind. Come Pastor. on, William. Let's I, have it. It's, 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 this is good doctrine here. <laughs> Amen. We're going out of my We Amen. just want to break it down. That's right. So you don't Hallelujah. take it literal. That's right. Wool is symbolic. That's right. Hey? That's right. Come on, son. Isaiah chapter 53 and we're at verse 1. All right. Right. Who hath believed our report? Oh, right there, God, the prophet's going to write. They got something written here. That's right. And they want to know who's going to believe what we're writing about. Where is your report coming from? Because God is dealing with me and showing me oh, yeah. things. And I got Preaching to leave it on record. So it, it, it's just so magnificent and oh, yeah, unbelievable. Brother. Whoever read it, I'm asking, who's going to believe what we're talking about? Who hath believed our report? Oh, right there, God. Hey, who has believed our report? Who has believed our report? Our report. And to who is the arm of the Lord revealed? Hold it. <laughs> to whom is the arm? The arm of the Lord revealed. Is the Lord arm actually coming down from heaven to the earth? No. no. Similar to. Simil that's right. Jesus said, if I tell you earthly things and you can't get it, how can I tell you heavenly? That's right. Understand what is the function of your arm and do you know what it means to whom the arm of the Lord revealed? Revealed. Reveal. We all experienced the arm of the Lord. It was revealed to all of us. How? Right. For you to be delivered from what you're in. That's right. Naturally, somebody got to reach in. No, go ahead, man. And pull you out. That's right. Go ahead, brother. Hallelujah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey. The arm of the Lord. The arm of the Lord. The arm of the Lord is the mercy of the Lord. That's right. By mercy, he reached down from heaven. That's right. Pulled us out of cigarettes. That's right. Pulled us from the club. Amen. Pulled us from the prison. That's right. Pulled us. Hallelujah. Arm of the Lord. The arm of the Lord. The here. mercy of the Lord. That's right. Go ahead. Are you getting this? Who has believed our report? Who believe it? And to who believe the report of the prophets? That's right. And to who is the arm of the Lord is the revealed? the mercy of the Lord revealed? For he... Are you getting this? Go ahead, brother. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, it's a God. Anytime you're alive, you are experiencing arm of the, Lord. the arm of the Lord. Arm of the Lord. If you got food, Hallelujah. arm of the Lord put it there. That's right. You got a job? That's right. Arm of the Lord put it there. That's right. If you wake up the next day, Hallelujah. the arm of the Lord Hallelujah. has been revealed. That's right. If you're able to walk, go ahead, man. Even if you got crutches, Hallelujah. And to move, Hallelujah. Go ahead. Just a little bit. That's right. The arm of the Lord, the arm of the Lord, is being revealed to you. That's right. If you're able to speak, the arm of the Lord, of the Lord, is being revealed to you. That's right. Even if you don't have all your strength, but I can turn left. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Glory. Go ahead. I can turn right. That's right. The arm of the Lord. The arm of the Lord. Is being revealed. That's right. When you don't know the book, you take it literal. Yeah. The arm of the Lord is the mercy of the Lord. That's right. It's the power of the Lord. That's right. That reached down. That's right. Sometime in your life. Hallelujah. Delivered your mind, delivered your heart, freed your spirit. That's right. Worked out circumstances. Hallelujah. Are you Hallelujah. getting what I'm talking? Who has believed our report? You that take it literal? Go ahead. You can't understand the mystery of the scriptures. That's right. He told his apostles, it's given unto you. I know the mystery. I know the mystery. But I said them, it is not given. That's right. 
Come on, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, son. Who has believed our report? Who believed what's written here? And to whom is the Glory arm of the Lord God revealed? And to whom the arm of the Lord is made known. For he shall grow up before he. Him. Listen he. at the language. For he. He. Shall grow up before shall him. Shall grow up. Before him. As now, if, if someone is grown up before him, right. the him is greater than the he. That's right. That's right. Well, who is the him? The highest. The highest. Who is the he? Son of God. Son of God. For he shall be called the son of the highest. the highest. Nobody can be higher than the spirit of God. That's right. So the son of God or the flesh that God made to redeem us will grow up grow before up. the spirit and the spirit will be in that flesh leaving a pattern. That's right. Of great works. That's right. The reason why he will grow up before him, before him because he was a body and a body to represent the body of Christ and the body which is the church must grow up before God, submit to his will, obey his will and follow the pattern. Go ahead. Or the example that the son of God left for us. That's right. How he conduct himself mm. is how the body of Christ conduct himself. That's right. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. So we all will grow up Go ahead. before him. Before him. Because him is greater than us. That's right. Are you getting this? That's right. Come on, Williams. For he shall grow up before him. He shall grow up before him. As a tender plant. Hold it. Tender plant. You know Mary ain't birth no leaf. <laughs> That's right. Similitudes again. That's right. Tender mean young. Young. That's right. So if he going to grow up before him, before him as a tender plant. As a tender plant. He was young. The spirit of God wasn't young. No. The spirit of God been around so long, he's called the ancient of days. days. That's right. But the son of man was a tender plant, tender young. Plant. That's right. That's why he had to grow. Grow up. Grow. That's right. In wisdom and in knowledge and in favor yeah. before God and man. That's the spirit right. of God don't grow. No. That which had color had to grow. That's right. But that which the spirit that made that which had color, it ain't had to grow. No. It always was. I hope you can get it so plain. <laughs> That's right. Listen at this. For he shall grow up before him. He shall grow up before him. As, as a tender plant. As a young child. And as a root. What? And as a root. Out of what? Out of a dry ground. The question is, what was the root? And what was the dry ground? That's right. Dry ground is earth. The yeah. Bible said all flesh is grass. Yes. What was the dry ground? Mary's body. That's right. What was the root? There was the root and the offspring of, of David. David. That's where Jesus come from. That's right. It is written, had not the scripture said that Christ cometh of the seed of David, out of the town of Bethlehem where David was. Yes. He's called the root and the offspring, offspring of, of David. David. Right. So when he was in David's house, he was in Mary's body, he was in dry ground. Dry ground. And when he came right. forth, it was a tender plant. That's meaning right. Meaning it was a young child. That's right. Right. Tender young child. That's it. Similitudes. Similitudes. Different shapes. Yes. Different forms. Different descriptions. That's right. Describing this one. That's right. Uh -huh. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And what? And as a root out of a dry ground. Right out. He hath no form nor comeliness. Oh. Hmm. He hath no form. He hath no form nor comeliness. You see, the Spirit of God, you can't lock him down to one form. No. He can come in many shapes, in many forms, in many fashions. That's right. Son of God, one form. One form. Child, grow up to a man. That's right. All right. And when we shall see him. When we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire there him. There is no beauty we should desire him. He is despised and rejected Look of at men. Look the Bible talking about Jesus. That's right. Yeah. Who was despised. I want to show you what the wool represents. That's it. Who was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow. Be quick. And acquainted with grief. Yes. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Uh -huh. He was despised and we esteemed him not. All right. Down in verse 5. How was he brought? But he was wounded for our transgressions. Listen at this. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Yes. And with his stripes we are healed. Yes. Oh, we like sheep. Oh. Mm. Oh, we are like sheep. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We've gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. Yes. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Yes. At verse 7. What is it? He was, he was oppressed. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He didn't rebel. He is brought as a lamb. That's what wool represents. That's right. Nice. The hairs of his head is white, white like wool. Like wool. White as snow. That's he right. was brought as a lamb. As a lamb. As a lamb to the slaughter. Well, hold it. Hmm. Now the question is, what do a lamb what bringing him to death and a lamb have in common? That's because right. to say he was brought as a lamb. As a lamb. So obviously it was talking about the behavior of a lamb and his behavior. Mm. That's right. 
When you bring a lamb to the slaughter, it don't rebel. That's right. The lamb come how? Willingly. Willingly. Yeah. That's why John said, behold, the Lamb of God, meaning behold, the sacrifice of God, because that body was a sacrifice. Sacrifice or offering thou wouldest not, not, but a body has thou prepared. Me. That's right. And the body was called the Lamb of God. That's right. Listen. He is brought as a lamb to the He is brought slaughter. as a lamb. Now, you can't see the skin of the lamb because the skin is hidden by the wool. That's right. You couldn't see the spirit of God because the spirit of God was in that flesh and that flesh was the wool, if I would say, yeah. that camouflaged the spirit. Right. In other words, give me Isaiah 45, chapter 45 15, and 15. and then give me the book of Hebrew and talk about the veil. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 15. Follow me. Verily thou art a God. Verily thou art a God. That hardest thyself. He do what? That hardest thyself. He do what? That hardest thyself. He do what? Verily thou art a God that hardest thyself. O God. O God of Israel. Who? The Savior. Go ahead, man. So here you had the spirit that was in that body of flesh. And the flesh represent the wool, the wool, meaning he was a sacrifice. That's right. He was brought as a lamb. As a lamb. And as a sheep dumb before a shearer. shearers is dumb. You know, when you bring shearers to shear the sheep, uh, it, it's removing the wool off the body. That's right. And the, when it came to the point that he was brought as sheep before the shearers, the uh, they was going to remove and kill him. That's the right. The Bible said they killed the prince of, of life. life. So he was hanging up there. The yeah. spirit was in that body, and then the body of wool of the lamb was the lamb. there. That's right. And the spirit stepped out that body and left the wool hanging there. That's right. Go ahead. He stepped out the lamb. That's right. The shepherd. Stepped out the lamb. That's right. And the shepherd went to the lower parts of the earth for three days. Yeah. And three nights three preaching days. while the lamb had to be taken down, washed, and laid in a sepulcher. In a sepulcher. And in order for the lamb to come back, right. the shepherd that came out got back in the lamb and glorified the fleece. That's right. That's right. That's right. And made the whole thing Spiritual. Oh, that's so that's right. what wool represent, yeah. meaning he was a sacrifice. He came as a lamb. As a lamb. Go back to the book of Revelation back, now. Back in Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. You folks walk around taking this literal. You need literal. revelation here. That's right. Uh -huh. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. Yeah. His head and his hairs. His head and his hairs. Were white like wool. White like wool. As white as snow. As white as ain't a human on the <laughs> earth. No. And a human no. on the earth. Oh, no. Hair white as snow. White as snow. I don't care if your hair gets so silver, if you bleach it, it'll never come out white as That's snow. Right. <laughs> That's right. Mm hmm And his eyes. Uh-oh. His eyes. Were as a flame of fire. I remember I preached this years ago in New Orleans, and there was a fella who jumped up and said, I told you God was black. The Bible said his eyes have a flame of fire. He said, that mean his eyes are red just like mine. I told him your eyes are red because you drunk. That's right. That's right. And you can smell the liquor all on him. That's right. You can smell the liquor all on him, fella. That's right. Notice the Bible didn't say his eyes is. And his eyes were as. Comparison. Right. Comparison. That's right. All right, viewers, I want everybody to hear me. And I want to use a natural example, then give you Bible, what the fire represents. That's right. You know, you know, it's nothing like having a nice fire burning mm -hmm. when it's chilly out there. Yeah. That's right. Very comfortable. Yeah. That's right. All nice and warm and whatnot, and sitting there Preacher, with man. your hot chocolate. Preach it, brother. Hey, man, Go comfortable. Ahead. But, buddy... If that fire started going up the wall, <laughs> that's right, and down the floor, that's right. It went from comfort to consuming. To consuming. So therefore, determine the behavior of the fire will determine how you respond to the action of the fire. That's right. If it's there comfortable, you cool, you that's calm. Right. That's right. But if the fire take on another mission, you got another mission. That's true. You run. That's right. 
Now do you get me? That's right. His eyes are as, as a flame, a of, flame fire. of fire. That's so right. he's a comforter. Yeah. And he's a consumer. That's right. First, let's get the consumer power. In the book of Hebrews. In the book of Kings, if you will. And the days of the prophet Elijah. Amen. Thank God when fire was called from God. God out of heaven. That's right. Uh, they came to the prophet That's right. and said, Thou art man of God. Second Kings chapter 1. Be quick now. And we'll start reading at verse 7. Read fast. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he which came up to meet you? Yes. And told you these words. And, and they answered him, He was a hairy man. We're working on his eyes now. Right. Eyes as a flame of fire mean uh, comforter and consumer. And I'm going to give you a Bible for both. Now we're working on consumer. Consumer. Uh, all right. Se Second Kings chapter 1. Now I'm at verse 8. Read quick. And they answered him, he was an hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. Yes. And he said, it is Elijah the Tishbite. It's Elijah the Tishbite. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. Yes. And he went up to him and behold, he sat on top of an, an hill. Yes. And he spake unto him, thou man of God. The thou king man said, of God. The king had said, come down. The king wants you to come down. And, El mm -hmm. and Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty. What? If I be a man of God, if then I, let if fire. If I be a man of God, let fire. Come down from heaven. Come and, down from heaven. And consume thee with thy fifty. And consume you with your fifty. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. What else? Again also we sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. Yes. And he answered and sent unto him, O man of God. O man of God. Thus hath the king said, Come down the king quickly. said, Come down right now. And Elijah answered and sent unto them, If I be a man of God. And Elijah knew he was. That's right. He was taunting them. Amen. Yeah. Mocking them. Yeah. Because he knew God would back them. That's right. If I be a man of God, every time he said, God yes. will stand behind it. And and, and, and Bible says this, he confirmed right. the words of his servant. That's right. Huh? That's right. Listen. And Elijah answered and said unto them, if I be a man of God. If I be a man. He knew it was going to happen. That's right. He got joy out of it. That's right. It made him happy. Amen. That he speak it and then God stand behind it. If it, I be a man of God, which I know I am. Let right. fire come down from heaven. Let God burn you up. And consume thee and thy fifty. Then what? And the fire came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50. God got him again. And All right. And he sent again a captain of, thir of the third 50 with his 50. He got another 50. And the third captain of 50 went up and came and fell on his knees. Oh, this captain did different. Amen. He's, he saw the first two get all burned up. He come along with, listen, now my approach just got to change here. That's right. <laughs> That's right. This man got some connections with God that I ain't never seen. That's right. So my approach, hallelujah, glory to God, my approach better be different. I better just kind of humble myself. So what did he do? And the third captain of 50 went up and came and fell on his knees. Oh, I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall down here. Before Elijah and besought Before him. Before Elijah and I'm going to besought him. And said unto him, O oh, man of God, I oh, pray thee. O man of God, I pray thee. Let my life. Oh, let <laughs> glory to God. Isn't that wonderful? Let my life. Let my life. And the life of these 50 thy servants. And the life of these 50 thy servants. Be precious in thy sight. I want you to value what's going on, man of God. Be, don't, don't you go, don't go calling God on us. <laughs> That's right. I come here alive. I want to leave the same way. That's right. Do you see what I'm telling you? Amen. Come on, son. Behold, there came down fire from heaven. There came down fire from heaven. And burned up the two captains of the former 50s with their 50s. And burned up the two captains of the former, former 50s. The first two groups. With their 50s. With their 50s. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. He come along and let them know, look, this is what happened to them. I don't want to happen to me. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, go down with him. All right, you go on with him. It's be, all right. I got your back. Be not afraid don't of him. Don't you be scared. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. Yes. And he said unto him, thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Akron. Yes. Is that not because, is it not because there is no god it in Israel. It ain't because God don't exist. To inquire of his word. You're going to inquire of his word. Therefore thou shalt not come down off that bed on, on which thou art gone up. In other words, uh, I believe the king was ill. Right. And that prophet let him know you ain't coming down. That's right. So here you had his eyes as a flame That's of a flame. fire. God is a consumer. That's right. All right. Now let's get God as a comforter. A comforter. I believe the uh, prophet John talked about him, one come after me, yeah. that's mightier, mightier than, I. than I. In the book of St. Matthew and chapter 3. And then let's get Jesus when he preached the comforter. The comforter, eh? that's right. Let's get it now, let's get all of it yes. about the comforter. I, I got Amen. it, Pastor. You got to get all of it. I, okay. Go to, I got all of it. First I'm starting at Matthew. You start get Matthew now. <laughs> Matthew chapter 3. Thank God the third. Come on, all. Williams. Matthew chapter 3, we'll start at verse 10. All right. I, or at, at verse 11. All right. I indeed baptize you with water. I indeed. Baptize you with water John unto repentance. It. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh 
enough. He that come after me is mightier than I. Oh, he's, he's stronger than me. Whose shoes I'm not worthy I, I'm to not bear. Even, I'm not even fit to bear his shoes. He shall baptize he you. He shall baptize with you. With the Holy Ghost. With the Holy Spirit. And with fire. And that with what? With fire. Amen. Now, just like he consumed them naturally in right. the Old Testament, he come and consume us spiritually that's right. today. That's what right. does he do? He come and consume everything that's in you, that's of us, that's not like the Spirit Hallelujah. of God. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Eh? That's right. Amen. The Holy Word, God's Word is a consuming mm. fire. That's right. Amen. They come to burn out everything that's in your heart, in your mind, in your body. But the way he consume it, you have to be around the lighting of the Word. That's it. That's why you got to have the power of the gospel, the word of God, preach and stay around the fire so you can constantly be consumed. That's and right. so there's nothing left of you but ashes. Amen. And when a thing is totally consumed and there's ashes, that means a complete death. That's right. You want to be complete in him. That's it. Amen. That's why the word says you are killed all the day long. All the day long. First you are introduced to the word of God and the word of God is ignited in you and start burning. That's it. Huh? It Amen. starts burning. You ain't consumed overnight. No. But it's a slow process. That's right. Slow, hallelujah, process. That's right. And then gradually, slowly, slowly. he starts consuming things that is of you, about you, that's contrary to his will. That's right. Don't fight the burning. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. Don't fight the burning. Give in to the burning of the word of God. That's right. Come on, son. St. John now, chapter 14, and we're at verse 25. John 14, 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present These with you. These things I told you when I was with you. But the comforter, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. The comforter is what? The Holy Ghost. John said he's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. With fire. And the comforter is what? But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. What is it? Whom the Father will send in my name. Whom the Spirit is going to bring. He shall teach you all things. He's going to teach you everything. And bring all things to your remembrance. Bring everything back to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. Whatsoever that I told you. Peace I leave with you. What? Peace I leave with peace you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Uh -huh. Not as the world gives it give unto of, you. It ain't the kind of peace that you get. From the world. It ain't the kind of happiness that you got from your past life. Let not your heart be troubled. Why? Neither let it be afraid. Yeah, why? The comforter gonna work. That's right. That's, that's why you find yourself. Sometimes you say, man, I don't know how I got through it. The comforter got you through the it. The comforter. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 That's it be God. That's right. The comforter. That's right. Got you to do it. That's right. Somebody asked me, wasn't you bothered at all to hear your life? No. Mm. I was sitting up there and the comforter was sitting with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Me. Brother, no. Wonderful, brother. Hey, man, I go in clan territory. I don't care. I go in with the comforter and come out with the comforter. That's right. I don't worry about that stuff. Hey, man, this thing will keep you here. It'll consume you. And so his eyes at the flame of fire mean he's a comforter. And he's a consumer. But when the comforter is come. When the comforter is come. Who, listen at this. St. John chapter 15. Now I'm at verse 26. When the spirit of God, when the Holy Ghost is come. Whom I will send unto you from the Father. I will send to you from the spirit. Even the spirit of truth. Wait a minute. The comforter is also called what? Even the spirit of truth. It's the spirit of truth. Which proceedeth from the Father. Which come from God. He shall testify of me. He will bear witness of the things of God. And ye also shall bear witness. Uh -huh. Because ye have been with me but from the beginning. Do you hear this? Amen. So yeah. here you have his eyes as a flame of fire. Flame of fire. Hallelujah. Meaning he's a comforter. That's right. And a consumer. That's right. It don't mean God. It ain't talking about the color of his pupils at all. That's no. Right. No. Not at all. And his eyes were as a flame. As. As. Big difference, isn't it? Oh, oh yes. yes. All right, let's get the rest of it. Come on, with. Now in Revelation chapter 1, I'm at verse 15. Follow me. And his feet. His feet. Like unto fine brass. It was like. He didn't say it was. Like unto fine brass. It was like unto fine brass. As if they, as burned, if they in burned, burned in a furnace. I don't mean he's black. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's what right. do brass mean, Pastor Jennings? Give me the book of Numbers. Numbers. Numbers chapter 21. Glory to God. Let me show you what brass mean. Numbers chapter 21, and we're starting brass at verse 7. Brass he's a deliverer. That's right. And I'm going to show you why is it at his feet. <laughs> That's right. Huh? Numbers 21, we'll start at verse 6. Follow me and get me now. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. You know, the Israel, the hard-haired, stubborn Israel. 
that God delivered out the land of Egypt. Yeah. Thank God. And there were some Egyptians that came out with them also, some strangers that came out. That's right. Blessed be the name of God that rose up against the servant of the Lord, Moses. That's right. And then uh, God sent fiery serpents. Fiery serpents among the people. Among the people. And they bit the people. And they much, bit the people. And much people of Israel Give died. Give chapter and verse for this. Numbers chapter 21, now we're at verse 7. Much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses. They came to Moses. And said, we have sinned, for we have spoken Moses, against the Lord. We sinned, we spoke against God. And against thee. And against you. Pray unto the Lord that Please, he take away Moses, the serpents from us. intercede for us. And Moses prayed for the people. He prayed. Glory to God for the people. And the Hallelujah. Lord said unto Moses. And God talked to his servant. Make thee a fiery serpent. Make a fiery serpent. And set it upon a pole. Set it on a pole. I'm, I'm going to show you what the serpent represents. That's right. Because after you leave there, you got to get John. Oh, yes. Huh? Oh, yes. All right. And the Lord said unto Moses, make me a fiery serpent. I want you to keep this in mind. I want to educate you and take you to Bible school today. <laughs> that's that's Remember, right. Remember, they was bit by a fiery serpent. And, and I want here, 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 Williams. I want you to get this. Remember one thing. Naturally, if you are bitten naturally by a venomous snake, snake, what do they do? They go get venom. That's right. To fight the venom that was injected in you from the snake. That's right. Are you listening? That's right. So remember, a fiery serpent. A fiery serpent. Bit Israel. Yeah. And many of them died. That's right. I want to itemize this. Amen. Come on, Williams. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it up upon a pole. Yes. And it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten. Every one that been bitten. When he looketh upon it shall live. Yes. And Moses. You, whoever look at this fiery serpent, you put it on the pole. Put it on the pole. And whoever look at it. Shall live. There, 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 live. That's right. Uh -huh. And Moses made a serpent of brass, and put it up upon a pole. And what did John say? About the feet. And his feet like a defined bread. His feet breast. was like fine bread. As if they burned in a furnace. And what did Moses do? And Moses made a serpent of bread. Moses! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Made a serpent of bread. Oh, who can change this? <laughs> That's right. Thank God, man, this thing is out of my so plain. That's right. Moses made a serpent of brass. And put it up upon a pole. And put it on a pole. And it came to pass that if came a serpent had bitten any a man. serpent bit anybody. When he beheld the serpent of brass, at, he lived. When he looked at the brazen serpent. He lived. That was on the pole. He done what? He lived. Brass means he's a deliverer. That's right. Now here we come along. Here we come. Here, 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 fire a serpent, bit them. That's and right. in order for them to live, they had to look at a brazen serpent. That's right. Serpent do one thing. And another serpent do another. That's right. If one serpent kill, the other deliver you. That's right. All you had to do was look at it. Look at it. Huh? That's right. Thank God. And let's see what that serpent on the pole represent now. St. John chapter 3 and we're at verse 14. All right. And as Moses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Even Son of Man. Even so must the Son of Man. Be lifted up. Be lifted up. And whosoever believeth in him. Whoever believeth in him. Believe in him. Should not perish. You won't perish. But have eternal life. Now. Just like they was bitten by the fiery serpent. That's right. You had to look at the serpent made from brass to be delivered. That's right. All of us. 